All right, it's that a cause. And in this video, we'll be looking at the Fontaine experiment of hydrogen chloride gas. The Fontaine experiment is used to demonstrate that a gas is highly soluble, or if you like, extremely soluble, or very soluble in what, not just soluble, but extremely soluble in water. A gas like hydrogen chloride is highly soluble in water and can be used to demonstrate the Fontaine experiment. How do you do Fontaine experiment? You start by getting a round bottom flask that contains hydrogen chloride gas inside. You fit inside it a long tube that contains a clip. Then you can also put a dropper there. You are going to color the water with blue litmus solution. So you just add a little blue litmus solution inside the water. It will color blue. So that when the fountain is, when the water enters into the flux, it will turn red because the gas inside is an acidic gas. HCl gas, hydrogen chloride gas, is acidic in nature. All right. So once you set it up like this, the mouth of the flask containing the uh, the gas is placed inside the water. That's this blue litmus solution. Then the spring clip, the clip at the end of this long tube is opened. Once you open it, water will slowly rise through the tube and enter into the tube, enter into the tube, enter into the tube, when the tube, when the water enters into the tube, when it comes out from the tube here, it does a drop of water alone, dissolves so large amount of the HCl gas that the water begins to rush inside, rush inside like a fountain, like a fountain. And the color of the fountain will be red because the water has been colored with blue litmus solution. However, if the water is not colored, if the water does not contain indicator, it will still form the fountain, but the fountain will also be colorless. So what is making this fountain to become red is because the solution, the one already contains a blue litmus solution, which will turn red in an acidic medium, like HCl gas. All right. This is what we have here. Like I told you before that the drops, the drops that come out from the long tube we dissolve so much HCl that there is a partial vacuum in the flux. So water will now enter into the flux so rapidly in form of a fountain. And the litmus will turn from blue to red. As you can see in this place, this is what we talk about here. Here we are not using uh, blue litmus, we are using phenolphthalein. And it's turning uh, pink inside the gas. So you can see that. So once you open the tube, water will rush inside like a fountain. Like a fountain. Can you see that? That's a fountain experiment. And it shows that the gas is highly soluble in water. So that is fountain experiment. Can you see? The color changes from colorless because there's an indicator inside this water called phenophthalene. Phenophthalene is colorless inside uh, a neutral medium. But in an alkaline medium, it turns pink. So this, so the gas inside the air is, uh, uh, is actually not HCl, but it is a, uh, it is an alkaline gas. Ammonia to be, uh, uh, ammonia for instance. However, if you use HCl gas, you are going to see the same fountain, but the color will be red. Because if you use blue litmus, you, you should have this color, this red color, this red color. So, but if you don't put any indicator, they are going to have spray of water without any color. So this is what you are going to be expecting inside a fountain experiment. Once you, once you open the clip of the... Uh, of the long tube, water will rush inside 
in form of a fountain. What are the chemical properties of hydrogen chloride gas? Hydrogen chloride gas reacts with ammonia gas to form a dense white film of ammonium chloride. As you can see in this place, you are going to see white films of ammonium chloride when hydrogen chloride gas is introduced to ammonia gas. So these two gases will react together and form a solid, a white solid. So if you are being asked to name two colorless gases that react to form white solid, it is ammonia gas and HCl gas. Both, both of them are highly soluble in water and can be used to demonstrate the fountain experiment. As you can see in this place also, this tube contains ammonia, this tube contains HCl. So, when you release the gases from the cutting wood, they are going to meet at a point in this tube. And where they are meeting, the ammonium chloride will be formed there. So that's ammonium chloride, this whitish material. It is formed nearer to HCl because HCl has slower rate of diffusion, as you know. The HCl has higher molecular mass than ammonia. So ammonia will move faster than HCl. So the meeting point will be closer to HCl because ammonia is faster in diffusion than HCl gas. So what we have here is ammonium chloride, dense white films of ammonium chloride. Similar thing that you have in this place. A gas here, HCl gas, this contains ammonia gas. And when two of them meet, you see a white film of ammonium chloride. So this is actually the test for hydrogen chloride gas. It forms a dense white film with ammonia gas. How do you dissolve hydrogen chloride gas inside water? When you are doing that, what you are going to do is that you remove the... You, uh, when you are preparing the hydrogen chloride gas, you know, what normally, uh, what, uh, what normally put here is the gas jar and this delivery tube. However, when you are dissolving hydrogen chloride in water, you don't dissolve it directly inside water. Because of the high solubility of hydrogen chloride, the water will enter inside the tube and enter into reaction flux and stop the reaction. So to prevent the gas from sucking back, to prevent the gas from sucking back water into the reaction flux, you are going to replace the mouth of the of the delivery tube with inverted funnel that you are looking at in this place inverted funnel so that so that inverted funnel will serve three purposes we are going to look at it now when you so when you put it inside you now put the funnel on the surface of the water as you can see in this place so what will happen is this if you use only the delivery tube the water will suck back into the ration flags to prevent that you use inverter funnel so place the inverter funnel on the surface of the water just a little bit below the surface now as the gas is entering the water we want to enter into the into the into the uh into the tube and suck back but because you have used a funnel so the funnel we take up the water and create a vacuum between the funnel and the remaining water. So this vacuum that is created, this gap that is created, not vacuum actually, is a gap. So we make the water inside this, uh, the, uh, the funnel to come back into the reaction flux, uh, into the beaker rather. So the water will come back and come back to this level again. Once this level is achieved, as the gas is still coming, the water will still enter inside again. Because of this gap, the water will also come down. So this the the you know the sucking of the water and the returning of the water will continue like that until all the gas are finally been dissolved. So what will happen is that the rise and fall of the water level will continue until all the gas have been completely dissolved. That is the 
technology that is used to prevent water from sucking back when you are dissolving hydrogen chloride. You use an inverter funnel that will enable the water to enter inside, create a gap, and the water will come down because of that gap. And the water will not be able to suck into, into the ocean flux because of that uh, technology. So the rise and fall of the water will continue until all the water and all the gas completely dissolves. What are the importance of the inverter funnel when you are dissolving HCl gas? Number one, the, the, the funnel prevents the back suction of the gas of the water into the reaction flux. It prevents the back suction of water, not the gas now, of water into the reaction flux. So it, it will not allow the water to suck back in the reaction flux. Number two, it provides a large surface area for the dissolving gas. It made the dissolving gas to dissolve over a large surface area. Then number three is prevent the escape of the gas. So you can be asked to draw the diagram for the dissolving of HCl gas. This is what you are going to draw for them. Where you have an inverted funnel. Where you have inverted funnel that is joined to a rubber turbine. Rubber turbine is the one that connects the delivery tube to the inverter funnel. Then you place it inside, you place it inside a beaker containing water. So that's what you're going to draw for them, this diagram here. Yeah. That is how to dissolve hydrogen chloride gas successfully in the laboratory. God bless you.